Robrick family today, uh, Saturday, April 18, 2020. And like every other weekend, we have something special for you guys. We hope that all of you are doing absolutely great and still in isolation. We, we understand that. But for that reason, we're going to try to bring you more entertainment. And this time, like always, again, Saturday, we try to bring you different things, not only the shows. And we have the honor, the pleasure to have one of the greatest wrestling journalists in Pennsylvania, a great figure. Uh, he's actually radio personality, a blogger, a uh, wrestling manager, a play-by-play -play commentator, and a pro wrestling illustrator, uh, writer, Mr. Brady Hicks. Thank hey. you so very much for being with us. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. I, I don't get to do too many of these, so it'll be a good time. Oh, well, and like awesome. I said, it's a pleasure uh, to have you. Like, we're going to be talking about you, all your experiences in wrestling, all, like, the situations that are going on. Like, right now, uh, you have also your show, very popular. Uh, actually, I've been uh, calling to that show. It's called In the Room, and that's for the BOC Nation. So you're going to tell us about all of these things, how you came out into wrestling and everything. But uh, I want to I start by asking you, um, how did you get in the business? How did how did this passion oh, started for you? <laughs> how did it's like funny. Brady Higgs decided I love professional wrestling? How how was well, that? Well, I mean, I decided that when I was like ten or eleven years old. You know, I turned it on, and I think it was the big boss man was throwing some uh, some jabron around. You know, and I yeah. I was like I I I love this. You know, I could I could, and my mom told me I grow out of it. Kind of like she told me if I eat pizza every day, I would get tired of it. And not true. I never got tired of it. Here I never. am. Never. At 42, you know, more than 30 years later. Exactly, yeah. It's um, So that's when I decided that, like, I love this, you know, and I want to be a part of it as much as I can, like a lot of you guys. So um, It is true. It yeah. Is true. Now, as far as, like, how I actually got in, in, um, so it started with a girl, like a lot of stories do. I, I was working for a, a newspaper in Philadelphia, and uh, the, my, the girl that I was dating at the time knew that I was a big wrestling fan, and... Uh, she mentioned that Shawn Michaels was going to be coming to the area. He was getting some sort of a, like a Christian service award or something from Holy Family University up in Northeast Philly. Uh, so they asked me to go cover it. And, you know, in the process of that, I, I got a real chance to, uh, to make a contact with Shawn Michaels. And, you know, we talked a lot. Uh, he, he gave me a lot of really good advice as far as, you know, getting into business and stuff like that. And, he kind of led me to Pro Wrestling Illustrated, which is, they basically opened the door for me. Oh, that's really great. So, like, that's um, awesome. how, like, what was he like? I know that, like, he was just converted to Christianity, and that was pretty great. I yeah. don't know if you, you, you know Hugo Sabinovich. He's also, like, he used to be the Spanish announcer, like, for yeah. WWF. Yeah. He's the one that helped him out to convert to Christianity. He's the one oh, of I, the guys that, that like, okay. Yeah. yeah, like he's the one actually, I think he also like he was the one that kind of baptized him or something like that. Yeah. I know that yeah. he held like he did that with Eric Guerrero, Mark Henry. So what, was Sean like approachable? Was he like, you know, good guy? Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, it's totally. And I've heard so many bad things about him over the years, you know, so I was a little reluctant myself. But he was he was so nice. He was so, so accommodating. I, I had a friend who uh, worked with special needs people. So uh, I kind of. I was able to, you know, just during the course of the day networking with him, uh, I was able to help my friend out to bring some of the special needs people around to uh, to meet Sean. He was so nice. He took pictures with everybody. I met his wife as well, Rebecca, and she was fantastic. I, I, I have nothing bad to say about any of the, uh, I guess you'd say the Hickenbottoms. Nah, uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and like, for example, like, will you say that like he's one of your favorite wrestlers? Like, the you know, Shawn Michaels, will you say that like he's one of the ones that you always look up to or you always like, yeah. Or a fan. That that's awesome. Like me. Yeah, I was gonna say that's idol. so cool when you meet one of your idols, you know, one of the people you yeah. thought was so legit looked up to, and then the yeah. person is just as good as what you saw on TV. Cause so so many times you meet someone like that and then yeah. you're like, Oh, like I, I kinda wish I didn't meet them. But that's so cool when you meet someone it, like it, that and you're like, up. they're even yeah. better. Yeah. Like for me as a fan, it was cool because like and, and people always say to me, like, Do I ever get like starstruck? Do I wanna like get autographs or pictures. Pictures are cool. At least pictures you can show people. But like autographs, there were only two autographs that I ever really wanted. It was Wayne Gretzky, who I met when I was 12. And it was Shawn Michaels when I got started in all this. And, and now Alexa Bliss. But that's a whole side story. <laughs> no, that, that, that's a question. We're going to talk about Alexa Bliss in a little bit. We're just warming up. You know? We're just getting it ready. We're just getting it no, ready. But, 
but you know, for me, it was very exciting because he was one of the people that, like, I always just in the back of my head, I just always felt like at some point that's going to happen. You know, that, that's that's awesome. That's so but cool. see, yeah, yeah. But see, for example, I know that like your uh, your inspiration, a guy that you look up to a lot, was Bill Abner. So that's the guy oh, that. That's the guy that like. Tell me a little bit about that. Like how how this guy influenced you in what you do right now. Well, it, it's so funny because like when I was growing up, at when like when you guys were growing up, I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure how old you guys are, but like for me, in the '80s and and early '90s, like Bill After was pro wrestling illustrated. He was wrestling journalism. You know, he would be cover to cover about 80% of what that magazine was and and I um and I there were a lot of other great writers I don't want to discount anybody you know but Bill after he was the face he was the personality I would tune in into like uh, NWA television and he'd be there giving the uh, year-end awards out pro wrestling illustrated black like that was you know it was um it was surreal to me if nothing else just getting to work and uh, do stuff with Bill uh, he, he's and, and, somebody and, that I've been a big fan of for a long time. And, and yeah, like, and what kind of advice did he give you? You know, like, what kind of things he said? Hey, don't do this, or hey, stay away from this. You know, <laughs> because I know when you're young, you're just well, like you're driven, you're hungry, you're one of the yeah. okay. I, yeah. I think I can take on the world and start writing about everybody. And they're like, hey, there's a little bit of rules, things you got to be careful of. I think he taught me to play nice. I think that's the biggest thing. And, like, I think so many journalists today, like, it's so it's so cutthroat in journalism, you know, and, and the way a lot of people are, the way that they report on things and stuff like that. But, Bill, he um he made friends everywhere he went, you know. He, um, he was always networking. He was always a showman. He was always entertaining. The guy does karaoke for fun. Like, that, I, people, somebody just asked me yesterday how I knew J Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Bill Apter introduced me. He invited me over for karaoke, and Jimmy Snooker was there with his wife, Carol. Like, that's the, that's the kind of stuff, like, that's how Bill After is. You know, he's just friends with everybody. And the other big one, I don't know about you guys, because you're, like, college age, so it's probably not great advice for you. Uh, but Bill After taught me to, uh, to always drink in moderation. A lot of people don't know this, but Bill is straight edge. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do anything like that, you know? And uh, I, I think it really helps him to focus on the things that he loves. So, oh yeah. I'm not saying I never have a drink, uh, but I try to remember that, like, you know, if you want to be taken seriously, you kind of got to present yourself seriously in a lot of ways. And oh yeah, I, that's I, something I that. Feel for that. Yeah. That that is something that Mr. Leg always reminds me. He's like, hey, we got to look ourselves. We got to present ourselves serious. Exactly. We got to look ourselves good. You know, we got to present. Not that I don't, that no, I don't yeah. mind having a drink once in a while, you know, or several, but uh, you know, it's all about when and where. So. Well, no, exactly. It's also who yeah. you drink with, you know, especially because right now with like technology, everything can be recorded, everything can be, you know, and then you have it a drug episode you. every year of the podcast. So like, I understand, you know, but, exactly. Uh, like you know, when you put people yourself people. out there, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I understand that. But like, I, I'm, I'm really like excited to see, like, see, for example, you met Superfly, Jimmy Snuka and everything that, that was really cool. For example, like, Tell me a little bit about like uh, like the people that you met that um, caused like really great impression in you. That you will say, "Hey, uh, I didn't think he was going to be that nice, or he was going to be that great." You know, it, it's so funny for me. Um, what well, one that comes to mind is uh, Stacy Carter, the cat, uh, Jerry Lawler's ex-wife, and she was yeah. in WWE for a while. Yes, um, yeah. because she was so nice and like so open. But it was like it took that like in. You know, like I had interviewed her ex-husband, uh, who was um, Sin Bodhi or uh, Kazarni. A lot of people knew him. Yeah, Kazarni. He was on the WWE for like a little yes. bit, like two yeah, two weeks and done. Two coffee. weeks and yeah. done. Exactly. Um, mm. You know, but he was my in. You know, because I, I she was doing a show that I was involved with, and uh, so when she came in, you know, I was kind of texting to him, and he said, uh, "Go up and call her Sugar Bridges, and she'll know you're okay." So I was worried about getting slapped, but I called her Sugar Bridges, and everything was okay. So, I, I, you know, she's one that jumps out at me because she was so nice, and it's like kind of coming off TV, you know, being a big star like that. I was like kind of like, you know, I, I wasn't sure, you know. But a lot of the people that I met, a lot of like uh, my closest friends in wrestling are people who weren't necessarily stars when I met them, you know. Like, uh, like Tommaso Ciampa. Um, who's on NXT now and doing a great job there. He's um, 
he's somebody that I met fresh off of his uh, his stint when he was cut from WWE the first time. And he was Thomas Penmanship, and, and nobody really knew much about him, you know? And he was just kind of trying to make a name for himself and learning bigger. And I, I was lucky enough to be a part of that, you know, through the uh, Super 8 tournaments and my affiliation with ECWA. Um, so yeah, it, like he's he's a perfect example of somebody that comes to mind like that. Another one is uh, Xavier Woods, who's uh, part of New Day. You know, he loves to. I, I it's funny because every time he comes to Philly, you know, I end up trying to meet up with him somehow. Usually it's just at like a bar. Sometimes at one o'clock in the morning, I don't tell Bill after I'm going, but I go anyway. You know, <laughs> <laughs> only play. No, it's um, you know, it, it's really great because uh, the special ones always remember you you know and it's like um because of pro wrestling illustrated that's helped that a lot too um because i had this great column called introducing for a number of years where i would introduce guys to the wrestling world that that were less than a year in the business and nobody knew about but i'm saying hey like pay attention to these guys they're going to be really good you know there was a I, I i interviewed a young kenny omega the young bucks uh Arya Davari. Uh, the, the, the list goes that uh, Shane Haste, who's on NXT now. There's so many of them who Madison Rain was another one, you know? Like, I, I, um, I'm I lucky enough because of – it's like I'm probably rambling too much, and I apologize, but I get excited about this. It's like – You don't apologize. Oh, no, no, we, no love, we love no, the story. You, you're we going love, on and on. The There's no time yep. here. You're going and on and on, baby. Enjoy it. Well, it, it's like one thing builds on another. You know, I get the magazine that leads to ECWA. The magazine might lead to meeting this person. It might lead to networking here. And it's like everything just kind of builds on each other, you know. And uh, so I've been very fortunate because I put in some situa- I've been put in some situations where uh, some really cool stuff can happen. So. Uh, that's awesome. Any, any Jean Paul? Any, any thoughts? Any questions yeah. on that? So then, you know, you were writing and stuff. Now, how did you decide, like, I want to have a radio show or get in, or did somebody bring you on and then you kind of took over? Like, how did, you know, in the room start for you? Yeah, no, it's it's wild. It's wild. Uh, I wanted to podcast for a while, but I didn't really see my spot to jump in. I didn't know enough, enough about, like, hosting it or editing it or doing any of the things that I needed to do to run a podcast and we're talking in like 2007 2008 when all those resources weren't really out there at the time you know all people knew how to do was like record a beef brief mp3 and like put it online like people didn't really understand all the ins and outs of like podcasting or streaming live or whatever um so i'm writing for pro wrestling illustrated and uh my uh my uh, managing editor who's a good friend of mine frank cruda um he uh, and 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 I miss Frank dearly. He uh, he had a stroke a couple of years ago. He's like not in anything anymore. Like it's horrible, you know, just to uh, to see him because like I, I don't get me wrong, it's great to see him, but like my heart goes out to him and his family because like uh, just what a tough circumstance. But uh, anyway, so Frank Cruda, he was doing a um, a weekly podcast on a network called Who's Slamming Who. Tommy Fierro is a promoter out of uh, North Jersey, and uh, he, you know, he, he had this whole network. It was different personalities. I, I know, like, Stro Maestro was on there that, you know, my co-host now. Uh, uh, Kevin Kelly had one. Uh, Steve Carino had one. Uh, Matt Bourne, Doink the Clown, had a, a bunch of them. All these different, like, little shows that people were contributing to this network. And Frank decided he didn't like doing it. It was just like call and leave a voicemail on a line, and then they edit it for you and put it up. So I started doing it. I took over PWI Weekly of April, in April of 2009, and uh, I never really looked back. You know, I changed the name about a year later just to make it more my own. But uh, yeah, I never looked back, and that was my kind of beginning with all that. You know, they took care of the early stuff until I learned how to do it myself. So that's and, awesome. We've been oh, around ever since for 11, 11 years now. Well, where does like years. where does like in the room? Where did you get the name? Or it was just like, hey, you were in your room one day, and it's like I'm going to do a, a part. Like, or that's how the name came about. So I was talking with. Uh, what happened was, um, and, and I'll go into the whole story now because I think uh, enough time has passed that I'm probably not going to get in trouble. Um, so in August of 2010. I did an interview with AJ Styles, and it was kind of my first major interview that I'd ever done. And he said some stuff in there that got him some uh, heat with TNA. You know, he said some stuff about uh, about WWE, the way they were like kind of uh, 
going with like Hulk Hogan and all the older guys in favor of the younger guys. And it was like, it was a bunch of things that basically like he was doing this call for TNA and he got in trouble for some of the stuff that he said. And um, basically, I was approached by the uh, publisher of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, Stu Sachs, tremendous mentor and friend. And he said to me, I'd like you to change the name of the show so that, um, so that, uh, you know, just because you don't usually associate controversy with PWI, and I know it wasn't my fault, but it was kind of one of those things where he didn't really want PWI's name attached to a podcast at the time, you know? So, not ready for it. So anyway, um, I was listening to this guy, Tommy Fierro. He ran the Who Slamming Who Network, and we used to rail on him, man. Me and my old co-host, DJ, we'd make fun of him every chance we got. Uh, kind of a little heelish, I guess you'd say, you know? But he was talking about uh, when one of the wrestlers died. And Tommy's whole thing is like, everything is about him. It's crazy. Like, he's like, you know, every, every, I'm sure you've met that a little bit in wrestling where like, so this guy, somebody dies and he turns it into like him. How it's about him that this person died. So he was in the room when this wrestler died and he kept saying, he must have said I was in the room a hundred times. Not the point being, it was sad that this guy died. The point being, Look at me, I was so close to him that I was in the room when he died. I was in the room a lot, you know? So <laughs> you just kind of... We took it from that. I don't even know if he picked up on it at the time. But uh, that's how we... And then I thought, like, you know what? It's it's kind of a cool name anyway. Like, you know, you just do in the room. It sounds like it's inclusive. It's like, come on in, you know, we're having a good time. We're hanging out in the room. And then, like, if we have a guest on, you know... It's like we're bringing this guest in the room, you know? It is. It, it know, makes it really me. intimate. It's very welcome. Oh, yeah. It's very welcome. And I didn't want, and I didn't want, like, an overly, like, wrestling-y name, you know? I didn't want something that, like, uh, either WWE could turn around and say, like, hey, we own that term, or, like, you know, it, it's funny because the E-Network has an in-the-room show now, but, uh, you know. <laughs> in the room? <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yeah. Oh, do. But, well, but, uh, go after it, them. You have the name. You can be like, hey, yeah. where's my copywriting here? Probably best not to poke the bear on that one. So. Well, I, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. So, but that's how it started. You know, we were making fun of Tommy Fierro, who has to make everything about himself. There's a lot of people like that. That like, we know that. We we know that. Like how we started. Oh yeah, like, not even in wrestling, just in you know, in everyday life, you see people like yeah, that. Yeah, it's so. true. <laughs> true. It's true. Uh, it things, is absolutely uh, one, true. <laughs> Two things. One, uh, like I said, in the room, I liked it because like it's not necessarily wrestling. I mean, if I want to interview an actor, I can go ahead and do that. It doesn't like it's not limited to just wrestling at that point. You know, that's one oh, of the reasons yeah. I liked it. The other thing is like you were talking about that with like the you know people the way they make it. When George Animal Steel died, I got into a fight online with the Blue Meanie because I was like, oh, when he died, all my Facebook, it was everyone, one after another after another, just talking about how they knew George the Animal Steel personally and what a great guy he was. And it's like, I'm sure some of them knew him, but don't tell me they're all as close to him as everybody pretended, you know? And oh, I went yeah. on there and I said something like, you know, I feel terrible that George the Animal Steel died. And um, judging by how everybody in my Facebook friends, close friends with him, I can feel like I really missed out. And the Blue Meanie didn't appreciate that. He's like, you don't need to be friends with someone to... Uh, to honor them. And I was like, no, you don't. But you don't want to make his death about you and how many people you know either. Oh, and yeah. That's well, where, like, I, yeah. That's where I was at. But. Especially doing journalism is you got to focus on just the story, right? It's like, hey, George the Animal still passed away. You don't need right. to add you in the story because right. you're making the story into you. <laughs> so it's just you're what happened and that's it. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah and, and no offense to Tommy. Like, we've, we've talked things over so many times over the years. We're good now. Uh, I'm not saying any of this to trash him. I'm just telling you about how I felt 10 years ago. But that's how a lot of people are. That is how a lot of people are. It's like somebody has a misfortune, and we're going to turn this around and use it as an excuse to talk about how many people we know or how great we are. Yeah, like like focus on, you know, stay on the topic, stay on, like, what is meaningful. That's Yeah, I will say that. So now that you say that, uh, Brady, tell me about Did you go to ECW? Because the example right here, our friend is like a big, big ECW fan. He's watched every single episode. Did you go when like it was popular in Philly and everything? So let me start off by saying I was a huge ECW fan. Uh, okay. I remember my friend came to me, my friend JR, my best friend growing up, and he said to me, I know you like wrestling. I, I mean, We watched a lot of wrestling together. He said, 
you need to watch these guys. They come on at one o'clock in the morning, and uh, what they're doing is real. It's not fake. It's real. They hit each other over the head, and the, the chair bends or breaks, or you know they, what they're doing. They're real fighting. And I didn't know the extent to what it was real or whatever, but I was like, as soon as we watched it, I was hooked. I was every single week watching it, which is crazy for me to say that at 42 years old, in college age when ECW, high school and college when ECW was at its prime, being 10 minutes from the arena, I have never been to an ECW show at the ECW arena. Now, that's the, that's yeah. a shame, Brady. You missed out. You yeah. missed out. I went to a house <laughs> show. I went to a house show. In okay, that, well, at least that, that's accept. something, though. Not that's the something. Same. <laughs> Not the same. I never got I got to that arena later, but I had never been there during ECW's run. So. Okay, okay. Well, any, any of the, for example, the Blue Mini, like, who else you, you used to like from ECW from back in the day? You know, a big one for me was Steve Carino, and he's been so, he's another one, you know, talk about people that helped me along the way. Steve Carino uh, has been uh, so helpful along the way. Um, I was blogging for, like, uh, little website even before pro wrestling illustrated um i was writing for like a, a just like a news reporting website in Philly. and um you know i went to an independent show I, a friend of a friend i had a friend who was an independent wrestler and i went to go check him out and i met steve carino and he let me interview him for 20 minutes and uh you know i put the, the interview up on the website or whatever but he's another one you know like he was just like so accommodating so nice and, and i I think if he had been really mean or like really standoffish, it might have prevented me from wanting to keep pursuing it. You know, so I mean, kudos to him, and he's been a great guy over the years. Uh, we got to work together a little bit in the TWA and ECWA uh, a couple of years later, and um, um, even now, like you know, I just did a show with his son last year. It's like it, it's incredible to uh, to think that like I can consider Steve Carino. A that's awesome. Yeah, so he's one for sure. Uh, a couple of the referees from ECW, uh, Mike Keener and John Finnegan, I didn't know them at the time, uh, but I always kind of appreciated the presentation of ECW. I love the fact that, like, people could get away with stuff, but they still framed it. Like, the referees were there to, like, somewhat keep it in check. It was weird. But I've gotten so much since I got involved in professional wrestling to, like, like I work... Uh, pretty much every month with John Finnegan at the ECW. He's our, he's our lead referee, you know? And it's like just getting to uh, spend time with him to pick his brain. These were guys who, like, even if you weren't a big ECW fan, WWE thought enough of you. It's TNA as well. So, like, these are guys who have a lot of knowledge and experience in the business. And oh, yeah. It's been great. It's been absolutely oh, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, but you say, well, the Blue Mini also, like, uh, he did, have you had the chance to uh, interview or talk to New Jack? Uh, <laughs> not on the record. Not, not, not on the record. No, um, I've been on shows with New Jack, and I've talked with him before, and the dude scares the bejesus out of me. <laughs> uh, he came to one show one time where I was doing commentary, and uh, he was playing with a taser, just kind of flipping it around like the big boss man would do, and he came about that close to hitting me. And I've been terrified of the guy ever since, you know. Um, but, I mean, I keep hearing how genuine he is. We just haven't had a lot of opportunities to cross paths, and I'm okay with that. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jean-Paul, I need something on that? You know that, like, any questions or anything? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, when you were growing up watching it, who was one of your, you know, favorites from ECW? Like, which wrestler were you, like, not even just thinking from the journalistic mindset, yeah, like, oh, yeah, I yeah. want to interview them. Just, like, you know, who was your favorite? <laughs> Raven. I loved Raven. I thought that, like, the stuff he was doing um, was so, like, I don't know. Like, it's one thing to be a hardcore wrestler, and they certainly had, like, great roots with, like, the TWA and Joel Goodhart and everything that they were doing, and... Uh, copying so much of Memphis's style, but for me, like he was hardcore, but he was a lot more psychological than the rest. Of yeah, him. like it was like oh, everything was very cerebral. Um, I loved his flock. I thought that they were really great. And I mean, ECW. I wasn't as much of a fan of the WCW and WWE versions of Raven because I thought they were oh, watered yeah. down. You know? Oh but yeah. Him, him turning the Sandman son against him. You know, stealing his wife. Like. All that stuff, like oh yeah, that storyline is just right. awesome. That storyline really is so was. awesome. That's really so awesome. Was. And then you play that off with like the goofiness of uh, 
Stevie Richards or like the Blue Meanie, and it was like amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they really did a good job, and, and yeah. I was a huge fan. I remember the episode. The one thing that, like, every time I think about ECW is the crucifixion of the Sandman and how oh, backlash did they get from that? Because, yeah. so, like, Kurt Angle was in the arena and he said, like, he was about to sign for right. ECW, and then he says, you know, don't <laughs> if you like yeah, if you put any that. footage of me being here, you'll hear from my lawyers. And Isn't then Raven had to come to out. Yeah, it is amazing to me that they stayed on the air as long as they did. Oh yeah. Yeah, but like, in that, talking about that, have you met Paul Heyman? Have you been able to talk to him? I have not. And it, and it kind of kills me in a way. I, I would love to. Um, because I've met so many people that tell me that we would really get along. Um, I've talked to him before on email and, you know, on social media. But no, I've never had the opportunity. And it's particularly crazy for me because he kind of like, he, he he's one of those wrestling names that started out with Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Yeah, 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 yeah. photographer and all of that, he kept building yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. and he just, you know, he just came about 20 years before I did, or 15 years before I did, you know, whatever it was, maybe 10. 15, yeah. 10 to 15. Anyway, oh. so, yeah, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. Yeah, maybe it was 20. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, but they're great. Well, you, you, I think you're a Paul Heyman guy, so I wish that like you will meet you, you can meet him soon, and then maybe we can meet him soon. Because for me, Paul Heyman is one of the greatest minds in professional wrestling. Everything that he's done, you know, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad, but I always keep the good. You know, like like to keep the positivity on everything. And he pretty much is one of the greatest like managers of all time, I'll say, or wrestling minds as is all, creating everything. He's done that. Like, he can sell a show or a match or a concept like nobody else. Like, he has helped Vince McMahon so much in the last, whatever it is, 12, 18 years that he's been yeah. on and off with the company. He's um he's just been tremendous. If you think about, list the best promos in WWE. And regardless of what you say about them, the fact that you're considering a guy who's about 60 years old never got in the ring and physically looks horrible compared to everybody else, he is probably the best on the mic in the entire company. Oh, yeah. And I think Absolutely. that really says something. I, I think Absolutely. Really, he, he, he has this real grasp of, like, what works and what doesn't and what draws people in. Yeah, yeah. he commands the crowd's attention. Yes. He comes out and he speaks every, you know, nobody's looking at their phone. Nobody's there like, oh, Paul Heyman's saying something. Yeah. We're going to listen to what he has to say. When I... I but when I and I ring announce sometimes, and I, I don't know if you wanted to get into all that too, but like we will. when I ring announce, okay, <laughs> I'm I'm probably dragging or droning on way too much. I uh, when I ring announce, um, and I studied under Bob Ortiz, who was the ECW announcer. Yes. Um, so I'm kind of getting secondhand Paul Heyman knowledge in a way, because like he passed all this on to Bob Ortiz, and Bob Ortiz passed it on to me. But I try to remember, like whenever I have that microphone, people should be paying attention to what I'm saying, you know? And if they're not, that's on me. That's not on them. You know? if, yeah. if their phone is more interesting than what I have to say, then I maybe need to change the way I'm doing it, you know? And that's what I try to keep in mind. Yeah, the so like... Podcasting. Well, it's true. Like, for example, like now, like, you see, you're a podcaster, you're a ring announcer, you're a play-by-play, -play, you know, you're, all, you're the whole package right there, my friend. <laughs> so what do you enjoy the most? Or, like, what, what does it come easier for you? You know, for example, hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you want to, like, introduce, you like to do the play-by-play -play a little better, or, like, yeah. what is, like, the, the thing that you, comes easiest, and the thing that you enjoy the most? It can be the same thing, too. Wow. I mean, I, I don't know that I could choose one or the other, you know? I, when I started doing all these different things, it was because I wanted to stay around. And that sounds stupid, I know, but, like, you know, writing for the magazine, the way print media is dying, there's always a concern for me that, like, they could take away all my assignments and then I have nothing, you know, and then I'm back just where I was. But if I podcast, you know, if I use my connections to get interviews and, and I put together a, a fun little group where we sit around and talk wrestling and it's an outlet, if nothing else, you know, if I go to independent shows and I, and I do play-by-play -play or I do ring announcing with, you know, Sit down with my man, Phil Sly. The dude is amazing. Check out his independent stuff. Yeah, the we will. Um, and I recommend him for your show as well. You guys would uh, really get a, a kick out of him. He, um, 
he he was uh the heel for the longest time he he basically was like a cuban defector he uh <laughs> but he was amazing he was a referee and uh he was a crooked referee although he'd never admit it and uh, he, he 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 was 10 and 0 in ecwa you know he never lost a match but he used his input and uh and he was amazing but anyway so i love you know i love writing i love broadcasting i love going to independent shows uh, meeting the wrestlers doing play by play i i don't want to take any of it away because like I've always just tried to spread myself so wide that like if any piece of it kind of had to go away, I wouldn't be totally out in the dark. So I don't know that I could really choose. You know, I, I liked it all. That's right? a smart that's a smart move though. That's definitely versatile, planning, right? Yeah, definitely yeah. like planting planting, you know, some roots, some seeds in every single outlet. So like you said, if one of them fails, you know, yeah. you still have some ground to stand on. And EC, you know, ECWA, as much as I love them, they could go away tomorrow. And if they go away, I still have the magazine and the podcast, you know? Well, and, yeah, that's um, true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, like it, it does. Being so know. versatile gives yeah. you so many avenues for you to just keep choosing. Hey, this is yeah. not working. Yeah. Maybe I go over there. You know, I can do this. I can do that. And, like, and also, like, see, you put the knowledge because I feel that as fans, we all have that inner wrestler. And as that, like, for example, for me, you know, I'm short, I'm, I'm skinny, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to be like a Rey Mysterio more beat up, you know, <laughs> that's all I'm going to be. So, but like, I, there's always that in me that I want to contribute some, somehow to be part of the yeah. business. I just want to be a part of it, you know, however it was. A lot of people like that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I always say that the future of the business is strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like we, we just love it. And I feel that like. I think there's so many of us. Like uh, there's some of them hidden, but like as we keep doing this show, they keep appearing. They keep showing up. They're like, oh, I like that too. Oh, I like that too. Because at the beginning, you will, you can say in the '90s, and I've had this conversation with Paul right here. Um, during the '90s, like the Attitude Era, NWO, everybody was proud to be a wrestling fan. Everybody yeah. was like, yeah, my NWO, and see, I'm. Sure. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, at that time, I, I'm living in Ecuador. I was I was born and okay. raised and everything over there. So for me, everything, I will get like a, a little bit of delay. But still, added to there, everybody. You will see kids like in my high school. Oh, the Stone Cold Stunner, Rock Bottom, hey, and all of that. So right nowadays, it's not as, you know, you when you kind of, kind of like come out with your share and everything, it's like, hmm. <laughs> like, oh, like you kind of like don't feel the same pride, I will yeah. say. I will I, say yeah that. yeah no I, I I agree I for me it always came down to like t-shirts like if you look at it like um and I think that's the best way to tell when wrestling is on an upswing in uh 2014 when Daniel Bryan was so big and everybody's running around yelling you know yes yes and they all had the the yes t-shirts and I I go to for example the Jersey Shore and I'd see uh five or six people wearing wrestling t-shirts you know even if they were retro ones uh, that tells me that they're out there. They're just they're waiting for something to catch on to where they don't to where they don't feel like a dork to wear a wrestling T-shirt to a bar. You know, exactly. It, it's got to be made cool again. The NWO was cool. Austin three sixteen was cool. Um, a lot of I, stuff today. Not. So I think cool. a, I think AEW is kind of there. Yeah. It's nowhere close as near as like ninety eight. You know, ninety six with the NWO, all that, but. It's definitely kind of getting there, you know, like, but AEW helped that. I feel a lot more, you know, the past year or so, you do see more people coming out wearing like, oh, you know, where, whether it's just the basic AEW shirt, yeah. or the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and even yeah. like you said, the old retro stuff, Macho Man, Bret Hart, Razor Ramon, you always see those mixed in, Stone right. Cold and stuff. So they are coming back, but it's nowhere near as close as it was like in the late 90s. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. You're right about that. And AEW, like, I, I almost think they're like a little like ECW. Like, uh, you know, people would just wear like the company logo on the shirt, and and they would wear it everywhere. Um, a much smaller scale, but I think I see the potential there. You know, oh, yeah. they've done a really oh, yeah. good job building the brand around people that uh, fans liked anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, Brady. So now, now that we're talking about companies and everything. Tell me in your eyes, like, and I know you talk about this in, in your show, but like, do it for a rubric family, the current state of the product. What do you enjoy the most? Do you enjoy WWE a little more, or AEW, or Impact, or NWA, or New Japan? 
I mean, I watch it all. I should say that. I, I don't watch New Japan as much as I should, but I, I try to keep up with the coming with what's going, going on. Yeah, with exactly. what's going on. Uh, my favorite show, probably presentation-wise, is the NWA. I really like uh, how they do power with the, the whole 80s feel and everything. I'm, I'm a big fan of most of that roster. And uh, I, I just think that they made a real effort to be different, you know? When I watch AEW, and I don't take, I'm not saying this to take a shot at anybody. I think Cody's done an amazing job with that company, and I have a lot of friends there. Um, but to me, it always feels like Nitro Light. Like, I feel like I, I'm watching something that could have taken place 20 years ago, and it's not really that different or that special, save for the efforts of a couple people. When I watch the NWA, yeah, like, it looks like it happened 30 years ago, but they're trying to be different than what they have today, you know, and they're trying to give fans something that um, is a little risky to give them, you know, and I, and I think they have a great roster of talent. Uh, Nick Aldis is a personal favorite of mine. I've had him on the show a number of times. And uh, I just feel like he is probably about as good as it gets in wrestling. Like he and AJ he's pretty Styles, good. He's a he's I, an excellent I, I, wrestler. Yeah, Mickey James's husband. Pretty yeah, exactly, pretty exactly, pretty great yeah. guy. And like the only like he mentioned something we will not touch on that. But like he said, there's a name in WWE. You told me, Paul, that like for that reason he cannot go there. But like <laughs> yeah, but he's a he's a really great guy. I remember him on TNA also. Like he had a great yeah. feud with James Storm. And then he went to uh, Global Force Wrestling with Jeff Jarrett. That company yeah. didn't last that long, but didn't last long now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's he's good. I like James Storm. Like his his the cowboy. I still you will see. Right. You will be a fan right. of the show. Every yeah. single time I see Bobby Roode, I'm like, can you get beer money again? I told him about the, to Paul he's about beer money. Yeah, I uh, I enjoy that. That's my favorite tag team on TNA. I will say that. <laughs> yeah. No, and yeah, I will say that um, AEW is getting there. I think we do the reviews constantly, and like there is a lot of good episodes. But like if they keep tweaking a little, a little bit of yeah. things, I think the show will get better. Yeah. Now, with all that, with with all that said, I think that um, WWE for the spot that it's in, for um, how big their audience is, and all the fans are looking for different things necessarily. You know, one one family might want a kids show, another family wants uh, something a little more edgy. Um, you know, uh, personal preferences as far as wrestlers and stuff like that. I think WWE does a really good job with balancing based on what they have. Yeah. Um, and, and providing a little bit of everything, especially in light of, like, the circumstances with, uh, with this pandemic and everything. Like, I feel like, uh, and, and I don't say this because, like, I think it's great that people got released or whatever. That's horrible. And, like, a lot of them, I... Now I'm going to sound like Tommy Fierro. I know a lot of them, you know, I'm friends with a lot of them, and I, I hate to see them going through this. Um, but the truth is, it is a business, and most people are out of work right now, unfortunately. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah. Like, I think WWE's like... done a good job with, like, everything that they have to consider, putting on consistently a lot and at least decent programming. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm oh, over well, it. I'm over yeah, it. We, we, yeah. We agree 100 percent like you said you know a lot of like writers journalists even podcasters feel like the way to get themselves over is to just be overly negative and like okay. we're in the boat where we're like hey we appreciate it for what it is we'll say if we don't really like it or agree with it but at the end of the day we're still fans this is still like you know it's still cool that we can even enjoy this during you know everything that's going on so yeah. we're in the same boat we you know hey it might not be the best show but at least it's consistent. At least we know we can always depend on it. And, you know, it's usually at least decent. It's usually not the worst thing that I could be watching. So, you know, we agree with you on that. But I want you know, we touched on the releases a little bit. You know, it is a terrible thing that happened. But I want to get your, like, direct opinion on it. I almost see it as a blessing in disguise for a lot of these people because they were locked in these contracts. But now, you know, when everything goes back to normal, now they can show... You know, the fans who saw them in WWE as, oh, that's the guy who goes out and loses in three minutes. Now they can see him wrestle on the indies or maybe AEW somewhere else and be like, man, this guy is legit. Yeah. This guy can really work. He, he's a good wrestler. You know, there's guys like Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, who I'm big fans of. Mm -hmm. Now they can go out and they can show people, hey, we're not just the guys who lose to the Viking Raiders every Monday Night Raw. You know, we're actually legit wrestlers. I think that um, the releases were kind of a blessing in disguise for some. Uh, Zack Ryder is one that comes to mind because he has been hustling 
for more than 10 years to try and get himself over. And it's like every single time he finds something that works, they would like cut him off at the knees, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, first it was the podcast, then it was that internet title. And it yeah. was like his promos, you know? It's like they took away his like mic time when like he was like getting over because they didn't want fans to chant him because he was a mid Carter. Like at some point, I understand you need to reach for the brass ring and not everybody can, but I feel like if he had left WWE five years ago and gone to Japan, he probably would have been a much bigger star with a much bigger WWE contract today. And that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, a great, it's a great thing that you're saying because the same thing, that's what happened with McIntyre. See, yeah. McIntyre left. He's like, so okay, I need to reveal yeah. myself. I need to yeah. like... Kind of, uh, improving a little things goes to TNA Drew Galloway everything I I think that's when he started to do the uh, claimer kick because I remember seeing matches with Matt Hardy he wins the title and everything yeah. and now he's back million bucks same that's thing together with Gabe Sapolsky uh, you know we were talking about Paul Heyman earlier uh, Gabe Sapolsky is like the biggest Paul Heyman disciple with Evolve and everything he's doing if you ever want to interview Paul Try and look up Gabe. Sometimes he's doable, and uh, he's hook uh, us up. That, that's what you gotta do. Hook <laughs> us up. Be, be our like, be our liaison. I haven't talked to him since he went down to Florida. They used to run in Philly all the time. You know, I would always see them at the uh, at the arena for like Dragon Gator Evolved. You know, but it's been a few years now. I, yeah, I'd have to look uh, in the old Rolodex. I don't know if I still have yeah. the number. <laughs> to, me, yeah, to me, like these releases, like Paul is saying, is a yeah. great opportunity for a lot of guys to reinvent themselves. This yeah. is the chance. I will say Rusev has another great opportunity. Yeah. Like all of them have like chances to do something better with themselves. Ryder, to me, 2011. You guys remember this? He was probably the most overstar when he wins that United States Championship, and Hugh Jackman helps him out. There were even thoughts that he was going to headline WrestleMania next year with John Cena. And, you know, and uh, sometimes the politics and everything take away from this guy that, like, he's never been a bad wrestler. His music was good. He looks yeah. great. So, sure. And he's different, you know? And he, yeah. And he, again, kind of like Zack Ryder, like, he found a way to get himself over, and it wasn't something that they planned, so they haven't necessarily been on board with it. Um, I, I agree. Um, I do think a lot of these releases um, were released with the understanding that nobody else would be able to sign them. And when all this comes back, they'll make every effort to bring all them back. I really do. Um, oh, yeah, I can definitely I, see that. I don't well. think they all will, but, you know, I think that a lot of them will, you know, because it's an opportunity to collect a paycheck and, and you know, be a part of WWE. And, hey, if you're there, you never know. So And exactly. also, like, see, like, they, they get a chance to travel the world. They do so many things. Like, WWE right now, the yeah. state of, like, the company is not just wrestling. Right now, you right. go and reach out. You have so many foundations that you work with, sure. organizations. Sure. It is just a big, it's a it's like global phenomenon. Like they they call themselves, so it is, it is the truth. But like now, tell me a little bit about like you say like Tommaso Ciampa, you're friends with him and everything. How does it feel for Brady to see the Tommaso Ciampa that you just met to see like the biggest and the greatest heel on in wrestling last year and like two years ago, the greatest oh, great. heel, like you know, great. incredible wrestler, a guy that like turned his career around just by turning heel, you know, and right now main event guy. Yeah. And I, I don't even think it was the heel turn that did it. I, I think it was he connects with the fans, you know, on, on the most basic visceral level. Um, he's giving the fans something that they want to see, you know, and whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, um, they like him. I, I, and he's relatable. He, and he's such a nice guy. He really is. Like I said, I think I first met him in like 2007 or 2008. And uh to just think that like this is the same guy and we still text all, all the time like he 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 just texted me yesterday asking me what i thought about his um the whole shabazz all around the you know the outside and on the top what was it the, the street fight thing oh you know the street I mean? fight like, with johnny gargano like yeah like just to think that like you know he would think enough of me to like confide in me about that kind of, it's, i i am i am a huge tomaso Ciampa fan and i think it's great to see that um the fans appreciate how genuine he is because i think it really does shine through oh yeah and no, I, I know i sound like tommy fiero again saying that but like yeah that's uh he's he's a great guy well, and it's good because, like, see, this guy, Johnny Gargano, like, these guys also, like, they're not, like, you know, the muscular guy, they're not the big guy, but the fact that, like, they are headlining NXT is so remarkable. Yeah. And, you know, if you ever, if you ever, he ever texts you back, they say, Robert, the guys from Robert say you did a good job <laughs> in the match. 
it, it was just a good storytelling. I really enjoyed it. We said it in the review. It's really great to see how like they keep twisting the situation around. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And he's so smart too. Um, like I, I, he was saying that he doesn't want to go up to the main roster. Like he, he, he feels like his spot is in NXT, not just for traveling. He's got a young daughter, and he has uh, his wife Jesse. Like he, um, he's fine just being part of NXT. And I, I wonder if part of it isn't because he knows how many guys get called up and then just kind of squandered when they're on the main roster versus like, what are you doing now? Is it going to get any better than that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I would say that the risk severely outweighs the reward of moving up to the main roster. Like he yeah. is, in the, he's been in the main event for how yeah. many years? He's not going to fall out of the main event unless, you know, he gets injured and hopefully, you know, that never happens again, anything serious, but he's not going to ever leave the main event. So why go up to, you know, the unknown where you could also be in the main event or you could be doing, you know, job matches, you know, for, for 30 seconds and done. So why risk it? And beyond that, why wrestle more than once a week if you don't have to? If he's got, oh, yeah. if, if he's got two more, if he's got, let's say, five years left in wrestling, which I think he's uh, 35 or 36. I could be wrong about that. Um if he's got five or six more years, generally like early 40s is when most normal people kind of stop doing this, you know. Um, he could have five or six years in NXT, or he might only have two years in WWE on the main roster before he burns out wrestling four nights a week. Oh, yeah. So, no, yeah, you've got to be mindful of those things yeah, and actually take yeah. care of your body because uh, if you exactly. keep doing that, your longevity will be longer, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, cause like, like, and like you said, he, not even his wrestling career, you said he, like, he has a young daughter, his family. He wants to yeah. be able to enjoy that life after wrestling with his family, not you know be in a wheelchair or be, you know, oh, I, I can only yeah. walk for 10 minutes and then I'm done. Yeah. You know, He wants to be able to enjoy that life. So being on NXT is definitely, I think, the smartest thing. For a family guy, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and for a family guy, unlimited time, definitely. Absolutely, um, absolutely, and, and, Brady. And he, he gets to go home and go to bed with Jess every night, as opposed to being in some hotel in... And know, God knows where, pretty much. Yeah. Indiana. No, because they're, no they're all over the Indiana. world. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they, you know, in, uh, in like Ambato, Ecuador. Like, have, nobody knows where that is. I'm the only one, the one that knows because I happen <laughs> to be born there. But, you know, different story on that. But, um, Brady, tell me a little bit about, like, for example, the last interviews, because I've been listening to your show in the room and everything. You had Eugene. That was extremely great. I really appreciate, like, having when he you interviewed another one yeah. I've known for so many years, yeah. But great I, guy. And he had a really nice run. I will say that. He did. And he had a really he nice did. run in WWE. He he's even um, uh, he's a, SummerSlam with Triple H. He's a guy that knew not to take himself too seriously. You know, like a lot of, oh, i got to plug in my computer here. It's about to die. Um... Yeah, he's a guy that knew that, uh, you know, maybe didn't necessarily want to be Eugene, but recognized the need for there to be like a kid-friendly character on television. And, uh, you know, he was willing to do that. And um, I, I would say he's been rewarded for it. You know? I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm totally on board with, uh, with, Nick, with Nick Dinsmore. He's a very yeah. unique guy. Oh, yeah, and I see he was, like, awesome. I will never forget that promo when The Rock is, like, pumping him off. He's like, yeah, mm -hmm. and who's your who's your favorite wrestler, Eugene? And he goes, Triple H! And The Rock is like, and the Rock is like yeah. what? <laughs> and that, that, that created that whole storyline that ended up, like, taking them to a match on SummerSlam 04. So that yeah. was, like, extremely great, yeah. And now er Earl Hebner. That, to me, was really big, Brady. That was, like, I take my hat on you with all the respect because to have a guy like that so knowledgeable and such a like for me important figure in what for me when I was like 12 and everything I yeah. started to understand in wrestling and I will see the matches uh, with him pretty much he was the main referee so yeah. to have an interview like it's, that um, it, it's cool thank you thank you uh, and I gotta credit Kathy for that one my co you guys met Kathy like, yes uh, we yes we want to say hi to her hi how you doing <laughs> she uh before the world fell apart I met you guys and uh we um yeah I, I, Kathy has been um, driving wrestlers around since the uh, mid '80s, you know, and she's friends with so many of them. So like, um, and that's part, honestly, part of the reason like I put together my show the way that I did was because like, you know, between Stro and Kathy and I, there's almost anybody that we want to reach out to yet, you know, we've had some sort of a personal interaction with so many different. Stuff. Um, 
like in my mind, uh, the Earl Hebner thing is a perfect example of that. Um, another one is Booker T. Uh, Kathy helped me get Booker T a couple years ago. Uh, while he was doing commentary on Raw, you know, we st- we had him, and like he uh, he's amazing. You know, it, it's just it's so cool because like when you see people on WWE TV, you tend to forget that like they are real people, you know, and like. I don't know. It's just it's it's weird for me. Um, very surreal in a way, to uh, to get those kind of interviews. Kurt Angle is another one we had from uh, when he was with TNA when he was a headliner. You know, um, when you get stuff like that, it's just like it, it makes it worth it. You know, it kind of makes me feel like uh, what we're doing is definitely uh, kind of paying off. You know. And with that yeah. said, we try not to make the show about the interview. You know, if we can get a great interview, awesome. If not. We'll just sit around and make fun of Rap Boy for three hours. <laughs> yep. No, it, it is true. It is, it is true. And when it comes to that, tell me, like, the interview that you enjoyed the most. Tell me the guy that, like, completely blew you away. What was the interview? Like, you were like, oh, my gosh, this guy is, like, just, whoa. Yeah, What's the no, guy that you enjoy the most? I've had so many good ones. Um, one that comes to mind was Serena Deeb. If yeah. you guys remember her. She Trainer. was one of the ones that actually recently cut. Trainer, yeah. She's a trainer, um, but straight off of her run in the Straight Edge Society, and nobody really and knew why Pong, she got yeah. And yeah. She got released because um, she was supposed to be Straight Edge, and they found her drunk in a bar. And they tried to cover it up, but the fans all saw it and stuff, and it turned into a whole big mess. It was a shame. Um, because probably for the 20 people that saw it, you really cut off what was a great angle and a great persona and everything I I, she was so young at the time, you know, like, I feel like, uh, but it was great. It really was good um, because she talked at length about all that stuff and, and uh, um, just getting to know her on a personal and professional level um, straight off of her WWE run and kind of see where she's taken her career and, like, even her post-career now. Um, it, it, to me, it's an interview that I always like going back to and listening to uh, because she has such a good message for me. Oh yeah, she 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 was not. like uh, she also was part of the Mayon Classic. I remember that she was she did that, and now then then she yep. became a trainer. And also after that, well, she got released. But like a lot of them, I was told that they're just going to be like pretty much laid off. They're going to be brought back. It's just the situation that you know where like we mentioned, it's a company. You're gonna make cuts, and then hey, everything's going is is back to normal. Come back. That that's especially how I feel. All those, especially all those that didn't have big contracts. It's like you can't really. Um, release somebody that didn't have like a like a, a I mean they, they do have contracts but they're not like um, these like unbreakable deals you know yeah they're like long term or something yeah. right yeah it's a furlough basically we're telling you please don't come into work because we can't pay you right now hey that's what it is that's that, what it is that's exactly what it is and and that also frees them up if they want to go somewhere else but the understanding is there's nowhere else to go you know because yeah, everything's much. shut down right now pretty much Hey, Paul, Paul, any questions right there? Any comments? No, well, I was just going to say, I know earlier when we were talking about interviews, um, yeah. and, you know, you mentioned AJ Styles a little bit. You know, how was that, you know, having them on? Was it, you know, for those controversial interviews? And, like, at the time, did you know, were you like, ooh, he's saying some stuff that this might, <laughs> you know, get, I, like, this This might get some eyes on my show. Like, I, this could I be good. Been, like, Yeah. I, um, I, here's my thing. Um. And a big part of what I do, I don't know how much you guys have really gotten into this, but as you're getting guests, I think you're going to find that uh, a large part of it is being able to build trust with people. And part of building trust is um, the understanding that you're not going to ambush them as far as, like, you know, you know that, like, a line of questioning can lead to something that could potentially get them in trouble. So you don't want to risk that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you like, don't want to lead them into that trap. Yeah, exactly. Because no amount of press that I'm going to get is going to make it worth that. You know, I, mm. I'd rather have no dirt sheet coverage and come out of it with this wrestler saying I had a great time and I'd love to come back. I, I'm all right with that. I mean, oh, if the dirt sheets pick it up, that's great. Uh, you know, we've been really lucky with like, especially since VOC Nation kind of started uh, a relationship with. Um, now I'm going to get in trouble because I can't remember the name of them. Mike Johnson, PW Insider. Sorry. Yes, please, uh, Mike Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a good friend, Mike Johnson. Um, yeah, like we've had some some great opportunities for coverage between them 
and Dave Meltzer and others, you know, Ger Gerwitz, another one who's been great. Um, but, like, like for me, again, you know, I AJ Styles, he came into that fired up and annoyed at them. And what I always do when I start an interview is I always say, is there anything that you prefer that we don't talk about? And there's always inevitably things that'll come up. When I had Lex Luger, he didn't want to talk about Elizabeth. I understand that. It's been talked to death, and honestly, there's nothing you can say that's going to make you look better. Um, Kevin Sullivan, he didn't want to talk about um, Nancy Benoit. You know, yes. And, it, the stuff like that comes up. AJ Styles said he was an open book. He went in there. He even talked about WWE Dream matches. This was when he was at his, the height of his TNA run, and he said, "I'd like to go to WWE and wrestle Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania." They never had that match, but they did have it on Raw, and it was amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, he, he went in there with an axe to grind, and he used my show to, uh, to do that, you know? And I believe that uh, they used his appearance on my show to give him a two-week suspension. But that's beside the point, you know? The point <laughs> is, he knew what he was doing. I didn't lead him to anything. So I, I knew it would be bad, but on the other hand, you never quite know what it's going to be until it happens, so... Well, you, you, to, you didn't know how bad it was going to be, but I they... did. I didn't. And the other thing is, like, because they trust me or whatever, I feel like if I ask a question in genuine, they always have the option to say, I'd prefer not to answer that, you know? Yeah. That's, oh, always that's, that's, that's the line that we try to do. You know, we yeah. try to, like, we make them feel comfortable. And then, they, like, we try to, like, stay away from, like, certain topics just because, again, we want to make them you know, comfortable, and, you know, as we, we go through that route, most likely they will get uncomfortable, and we don't want to do that, so, and we're not trying to make you feel uncomfortable this time, but we're going to talk about what we said in your show, the uh, Mount Rushmore, we were talking about greatest of all time, so yes. we want your greatest of all time, Brady. Uh, okay, we should establish criteria, that's what I decided, because, like, if you're talking the greatest, like, workers of all time, that'll be a whole different list than, like, yeah. the greatest, most marketable, whatever, the, the mega yeah, well, story, you know? I would say do, um, I, I mean, if you can do both real quick, say, like, who's the greatest draw, and then, like, who are your, like, your greatest, like, in okay. ring? Uh, greatest draws. Greatest draws. Uh, five? Four, five? Four, four. Give me four. 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 Okay. Um, well, if you're going four... For greatest draws, I think you got to go Bruno, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, and The Rock. I, I there you think go. Yep. To me, they're four figureheads for WWE's four most prominent eras, and they were the that was the biggest company during those periods. Um, I have trouble not putting Ric Flair on there. That's why I asked five. Um, okay, but we'll do the five. Come, come in. To Rick. me, he should be up there with those guys. Um, but he didn't necessarily have the same degree of exposure outside of the wrestling magazines and, and being, you know, on a secondary television show. All right. And now in ring, in ring, like competitors. Okay. And uh, do five. Yeah. Let, let's do top five. Top five. That's broken. fine. That's Woo. fine. Uh, so flair, obviously, um, Shawn Michaels. It's tough for me. I'm not a Bret Hart fan. I am not a Bret Hart fan. John Paul, cover your ears on that. Cover your ears. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah. that, that's all right. That, that's what's I beautiful apologize. about wrestling, because nobody's yeah. nobody likes the same stuff. If we all like the same yeah. stuff, it would all be boring. That's yeah. true. And I love personal stuff. Like He's always been great to me anytime I've ever had to deal with him. Uh, he hates it when I say that the Montreal screw job was a work, but I do believe it was a work. Um, but <laughs> That's a I tough am, um, another episode with Brady, <laughs> right? There. I asked Earl. I asked Earl. He said he thought it was a work. So. Uh, <laughs> I um, Okay, so... Um, so what did I say? I said, um... You Rick said Shawn Michaels? Rick yeah, Shawn Michaels, Michaels and Rick Slayer. Yep. I guess you got to put Brett in there. I, not necessarily a fan. Um, Ricky Steamboat and Kurt Hennig. Mr. Perfect and the Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very old school, but very old school. Yeah. Very old school. Like. They haven't really been replaced, you know? I mean, there's, there's some good ones today, but, you know? It's, uh... I will say, how about Kurt Angle? Because he, uh... Paul and I have these conversations before we go on air because we like to get our wrestling minds going. It's like he tells me, like, dude, it's like, why nobody ever considers Kurt Angle like the best of all time? And yeah. I will say it's true though. Kurt Angle had one at yeah. some point. Look at Kurt Angle 08. Kurt Angle was probably like the best wrestler in the world. Those matches with Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Christian. Yeah. 
completely, you know, blew away, like, great. It, it was just like, you see, the guy was perfect. He was so flawless. Oh, yeah, was, and like, you know, anything you give him, you tell him out there, go out there, be serious, bury the crowd, he'll do it. Wear a little cowboy hat and look like a goofy idiot, he'll yeah. do it, and he'll get it over. Like, anything he could get over, and as soon as that bell rang, nobody was more intense. I Brock Lesnar, nobody. So, I, I mean, agree. to me, he's up there, he's legit. I, um, I, I, I couldn't agree more with any of that. I think part of the reason is that uh, the longevity thing, I don't think he even pulled in a full 20 years. He started around like 98 and he took some time off and, um, you know, a good bit of that run was in TNA and that's not a total knock on TNA because they've been very good to me, but, um, you know, they weren't traveling to the extent that WWE was. They weren't as prominent. Uh, so I, I think that all that hurts him, you know, I think if he had come into WWE in 1998 and he put in two solid decades, uh, we'd be comparing him with Shawn Michaels right now. Oh, oh definitely, definitely, because a lot of his, like we said, a lot of his best work, and he even says himself in interviews, his best work was in TNA, and the only people who really were exposed to that are people who just happen to watch it or hardcore yeah. wrestling fans. The common yeah. wrestling fan who only really watches WWE, they're like, oh, Kurt Angle, I remember him from back in the day, and when right. then he came back, he was the GM. That's all they, all that's all they know. To, it all comes back to me. Uh, we used to, in the early days of the OC Nation, uh, we used to have Rob Van Dam on a lot. And I don't know if you knew this, Juan, but like VOC Nation, like the network, that's one thing. But it, it was born out of uh, an AM radio show here in Philly. It was myself and Voice of Choice Bruce Word. And um, so we would have Rob Van Dam on a lot in his early days. And this is totally separate from my podcast. This is something that did go away, but I was okay with it because I had all this other stuff. Um, and he would say how like, People would come up to him in an airport and say, hey, you used to wrestle. He'd be the, the TNA world champion. He just wrestled Matt Hart or, uh, Jeff Hardy in like a pay-per-view. And people will be like, hey, I remember when you used to wrestle. What are you doing now? No idea that TNA even existed, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah it is true. Like a lot of among non-fans. A lot of people like didn't know about it. You know right. how, and, and this is a fun story for you, and uh, Paul knows about this story. I, uh, I, was, I was freshly new in America. And my dad will like, I didn't have a car. I didn't know how to drive, you know, complete, you know, complete new here. And my dad will drop me at Barnes and Nobles every time. And he will say, you know, wait for me. I got to go and do some stuff. I'll come and get you. And then I will like look for, for magazines. And I found out Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I found out that and I'm like, oh, and my English wasn't good at that time. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, wrestling. That's the only thing that like, I didn't pro. Mm -hmm. But wrestling is like, okay, lucha. Yes. <laughs> so, and I saw like wrestlers and everything. So I, I will see the articles and I see TNA, TNA, TNA. And I'm like, what the hell is TNA? And then I start looking in the internet and everything. And that's how I found out about TNA. Because other than that, I didn't know about anything about that. Then I'm like, oh, Kurt Angle is there. Oh, Booker T is in there. Oh, yeah. like those names. Yeah, it's like, no, now I know where Jeff Hardy went for multiple points in his career when he, was, when he left. It's like, where did Jeff go? Oh, now Jeff's back. Yeah. Oh, now I know where he went. Oh, the, oh, the okay. Hardys are there. The Dudleys are there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The Road Dog, because like a lot of people hate that I love the Road Dog, but that's fine. <laughs> like I, wow. the New Age Outlaws are like for me fun. one of my favorite tag teams. I enjoy Billy Gunn. You know, I always say to Paul, I'm like Billy Gunn could have been one of the greatest wrestlers of all time if he could have been a lot better in the mic. I love wow. his moveset and like everything, yeah. everything. Yeah. And Road Dog for me was absolutely like, I used to just like had the time of my life just watching and the boys and, the boys and girls of all ages, the Generation X and I, I didn't understand a single thing. They made it different. But, yeah. But it was good. Yeah. So. I, I, and, and, and you know what, your story with the magazine, that's not unlike so many other people. Like I, I, um, I never watched like world class wrestling growing up, you know? But I read about it in magazines to the point where I feel like I knew everybody. And when they had a special on ESPN, I was able to follow it, having never seen a, a damn thing with it, you know? And it was, uh, you hear that story a lot, like where the wrestling magazine, especially in the 80s and 90s, it was kind of a bridge for people that didn't have the internet back then to be able to check this stuff out. Yeah, no, no, you're like, the magazine oh, did definitely. a lot for me because it helped me, like, it educated me a little more. ECW because oh, this as well. Like, yeah. like, for me, like, I work for ECWA. We do that Super 8 tournament every year. You know, we're going on, uh, we're more than 20 years doing that now. Uh, and it's like, I wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for the wrestling magazine. But when I finally got to go in 2007, I was hooked. I haven't missed another one since, whether as a fan, 
as an announcer, as a commentator, whatever the case may be, I've made every single one. Exactly. And so you do build those connections and then you get like, I got hooked. I told you TNA. And I, that's why like Paul asked me like, what do I need to watch? And I tell, watch this, watch that yeah. because it was really good stuff. Like see mm -hmm. Jerry Lynn, Gene, Ron Van Dam, like that rivalry, AJ Styles against Christopher Daniels. That was really great for me at that time. That was really awesome. Like now that Christopher Daniels and AEW is not, well, you know, age and everything, but to me seeing them go, it was just to me the best matches I ever seen. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk about Brady, something, somebody that like we both love and Paul doesn't like too much, okay. is that we have an infatuation with Alexa Bliss. Tell me a little bit about your encounter with Alexa Bliss. About my encounter? Uh, <laughs> it was kind of like an encounter. I, um... <laughs> or like, well, you, you, like you... I've you... been a big fan. I, I've been a big fan for a while. I remember the first time uh, when NXT came to Philly uh, at the... Um, well, I forget the name of the venue, the, the tra Trocadero. I, mean, I forget where it was, but no, no, it was um, wherever it was. NXT came, and um, Upper Darby it was. And, uh, and, okay. And so she was there, and, like, I don't know, like, for whatever reason, like, I just, I was really kind of taken by her. Because, like, I, I mean, aside from, like, the physical like, beauty and stuff like that, like, I don't know. Like, she just struck me as, like, this is somebody who kind of, like, gets it, you know? They know how to, like, manipulate the fans and, like, I don't know. It's just, like, even in those NXT days when they weren't doing much with her, she just always struck me as, like, somebody who I thought had a really, really bright future. So I was beyond ecstatic to see her kind of come up to the main roster and um, really get pushed, uh, even at the expense of some of those, like, really great wrestlers that they brought up, you know, like the like like Sasha Banks and Charlotte and people like that, like, uh, Bailey is another one. Uh, Becky Lynch, uh, like she, she has, um, she's almost like on the same level as them in a way, at least in terms of the, like the way the fans perceive her. And I gotta think that the personality has a lot to do with that, for sure. Uh, I was lucky enough, and I've had two occasions now uh, where I got to interview her. Um, one was for uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. They, uh, they sent me to an event, uh, I believe it was uh, before the World on One, I just got to ask her a couple questions for something, and, uh, you know, she was really nice, really accommodating, I, I, I walked out with, like, her contact information and everything, and it was, like, it was amazing, it was, it was, it was absolutely just, like, just so accommodating, you know, uh, because a lot of times those autograph signings can be really stressful, and it's like, you know, you're putting in so much time, and it's like, the last thing you want to do is take time to answer questions, but, uh, just so nice, and I found out that, like, you know, she has a collection of the magazines at home, uh, you know, that involved her or at the time that involved Buddy Murphy. So, um, yeah, no, it was it was really cool to um, to get that opportunity. And then I had another chance, uh, I guess it was uh, WrestleMania last year up in New York. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, uh, uh, really cool stuff. Yeah, so now, yeah. Brady... Like we're gonna like I think we've talked about a long uh, a lot of things in wrestling. So yeah. any any last question, Jim Paul? Anything? Yeah, well, any I was gonna say like kind of going off what you just said and how Brady, you know, you earlier you said you're involved in so much stuff in the wrestling world that like do you have any time to do anything that's not wrestling related? Like, do, and do you even <laughs> want to? Like, are you into other sports? You know, do you like movies, stuff like that, or Wait, or none what? of that stuff good enough? And you're just all wrestling. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the Brady outside of wrestling. We know that you're an Eagles fan. We know that. I, I am a big Eagles fan. I'm also a Chiefs fan because I always liked Andy Reid and before that, uh, Priest Holmes. But like, yeah, no, I always liked. Um, I, I always liked the Eagles, at least for a long time I have now. Um, I'm a Philly guy, you know, so I like the, the, the Philadelphia sports. I grew up as a Flyers fan and stuff like that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm big into the sports. I really am. Um, I mean, you know, I, I watch movies. I watch television. I, I love to, uh, to go out and have a couple adult beverages every once in a while. That's always a good time. Um, more recently, as it's funny, um, I did... So when I travel, we'll do, like, my girlfriend and I will do, like, haunted tours. They have, like, haunted tours. Um, oh, okay. I, like, I was in Ottawa in February, which, like, people think is insane because it's, like, Siberia on a budget. You know, it was freezing up there. Uh -huh. It was hard. But, like, you know, we did a ghost tour, and so I'm walking around this haunted prison just kind of capturing pictures, and, like, I, I get a picture of what I think is a pretty cool ghost, you know? So it's kind of like 
now this has inspired me to go back and look at old pictures. And uh, I've been doing this little by little. I've got probably 40 years worth of pictures that I've taken. And I'm going back and looking for ghosts in like places that were, and I found so many. It's so, so I've got like this little Instagram like side hustle where I'm putting up my old ghost pictures, and people were really. Oh yeah, ghosts. that's that's so cool. That's, like, yeah. And it's been a really good distraction for me with this pandemic because like all you need is your phone and access to like the cloud where your pictures are, and a little bit of like editing to like lighten pictures or whatever to make them easier to see. Uh, yeah. But I've got some. I just took a bike ride uh, down the street, um, down the street the other day to uh what what was a haunted bookstore and i just took a bunch of pictures and i got a really like cool like kind of phantom in the window like it was like so like this is something it's stupid and like there's no way to quantify it or make money off it or whatever but like i don't know like it's just it's fun to me you know and i think when all like the restrictions are list lifted uh i think this might be taken away from the wrestling a little bit i want to go out and like kind of ghost hunt Oh, you're the ghost hunter. That should yeah. be your gimmick then. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, yeah. we're gonna name you the ghost hunter. <laughs> we'll add that. We'll add that to the many, many you know titles of Brady Hicks here. And but see, that's cool because it shouldn't. That you know, life should be about doing things that you have right. fun with. So it's like, hey, if one of the one or you know some of the wrestling aspects, you need to tone it down just a notch or two to enjoy this ghost hunting and taking pictures. You know, go ahead, do it because that's you know that's what life's about, and that's awesome. You gotta diversify. I'm telling exactly. you, you know, wrestling could go away, but you need you need other stuff in your basket. So let's hope not. Let's hope not. But yeah, if it, <laughs> if it goes away, we're already thinking <laughs> about like other close. avenues to like you know. Yeah, we're thinking about different avenues to keep doing it. Like, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. cool. It's, it's so like, well, you said you like the Eagles and everything, and um, yeah. so use this time for all the followers that you have. We're gonna give you the floor. And then you tell your message to everybody that follows you, friends and everybody, you know, is your floor. You tell them anything and also leave us with like a message, you know, what would you say to like people that like are getting into the business and even in journalism, I won't even not call it wrestling, but journalism, what will be your message? How like to get into that, like the feel. Okay. I'll, I'll start out with the advice if that's okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, it's your show, sir. You do. For me, it's hustle. You know, it's uh, it's a lot of like going out and doing it yourself, making it happen. Uh, there are always opportunities to write, and there will always be places. Excuse me, if you want to write enough, there are always places that will take you. You know, so uh, a lot of times it's about getting that experience that you need. Uh, you know, I talked earlier about the ladder, like this built to this, built to this. So like, you might have to start out if you want to write about wrestling. You might have to start out on a website, you know. Once you get some clips together, maybe submit it to Pro Wrestling Illustrated or whatever, or, or to a local newspaper, you know, whatever kind of journalism you want to get into. Um, but it's not necessarily a thing where you can jump right in and start making money at it right away. I mean, if it were, then I probably would be uh, profitable right now. But <laughs> I, uh, no, it's... um. But definitely keep your head up, you know, don't get discouraged and, and all that stuff. And, and I mean, I mentioned it before with the interviews, I think be positive, you know, be, 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 be somebody that they feel like they can trust. Like if I, um, perfect example, I interviewed uh, Brian Blair, former WWE wrestler, heads the Cauliflower Alley Club now. I've built up such a trust with this guy over the years that I could ask him for an interview out of the blue and he could be having the worst day. And he's told me this before. He'll be like, you know, um, you guys, like, you've built up a trust with me to where, like, I feel like you can't lead me wrong, so if you want me, you got me. Like, you have to build a trust with the people that you're writing about, you know? And not necessarily worry about getting the big headlines so much as um, being there for making a difference through your writing. And so that's what I've always tried to do as far as that goes. Um, so that's what I would recommend for sure. Good. Um, now, what was the other thing you want to... Uh, you you said like a message for myself? everybody that like listens to you in the BOC Nation, yeah, you know, yeah. in the room, like the uh, the nanny. The nanny's the one that like catches on my... The nanny's like the one that like I, every time I like... She calls and everything, she's great. I just know like she always has something great to say. Uh, who? Oh, Nanny Hulk, Granny Hulk. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. She's a, uh, she's interesting for sure. She just started calling maybe about a month and a half, two months ago. Um, okay, so um, a I message to everybody. Like, Tell them, hey, you know, 
Well, we're live on the air each and every Tuesday night uh, from 9 until about midnight. Um, and, you know, we'll take your calls for short. Uh, 657-383-1666. Uh, that number again, 657-383-1666. And uh, so that's how you would call and like get in touch with us. It's myself. It's Stro Maestro from WCW, who has been amazing. Uh, my good friend Kathy Fitz, uh, my friend from college Matt Grimm, uh, my friend Derek. I got all these friends now. Ray Bogus is back. We've uh, we've got a, an interesting kind of assortment of opinions, and, and it's. I always wanted to be like sitting around in the living room, just kind of like just just talking, you know, and that's. Kind of what it is, so, and you know we love taking the callers and everything. Um, we are part of, of course, the uh, VOC Nation, which uh, that's my partnership with Bruce Wirt. We kind of merged our networks a couple of years ago, and um, VOC Nation has some great stuff on there. He's got we have wrestling with history on Wednesdays with uh, Voice of Choice and uh, Ken Resnick from the AWA and WWF. We have WCW Retro. I'm proud I named that show myself, WCW Retro. ECW um, Retro too, right? They have yeah. like a, something well, on ECW. ECW. Okay, um, but there's yeah, also another one on ECW too, though, right? Not with us. No. Oh, okay. No, yeah. then no. <laughs> then I'm yeah. kidding. That's okay. Yeah, WCW Retro with Stro and uh, Briscoe and Big Ace with uh, Wes Briscoe. He's Jerry Briscoe's son. Um, so, and we have a great, you know, just great collection of talent on there. So please, please, please check it out. Uh, as far as like the wrestling. Uh, like the shows and stuff like that. My main company is ECWA. I've been with them on and off for basically the last um, probably about 12 years, I would say, uh, as a commentator, as a ring announcer, as an interviewer, and uh, just a general gopher. You know, it's um, it's it's been a great experience. I've been there now through uh, through three different owners. Uh, I when I got there, it was Jim Kettner down in Delaware promoting, uh, bought by Mike Tartaglia, and more recently. Uh, sold to another party as well, and um, so I've seen ECWA go through a lot of changes, but I consider them my home company, and I've been through a lot of different independent wrestling companies. One that comes to mind is New Moon. Um, they were amazing. You know, it was they were so helpful to me when I was kind of learning commentary and stuff like that. And their roster was top notch. Like people don't really talk about New Moon. Uh, but we had like uh, like Damian Priest, who's on NXT. He was like one of our guys. Or, like, Hank Tolan, he's like a, a huge name in wrestling, you know. Uh, Mike Reed, who just uh, just did stuff with AEW last week. Like, there's like uh, just just tremendous kind of talent. And I've been very lucky being in the Philadelphia area um, to get to interact with a lot of really great people in and out of wrestling. So that's awesome. Really lucky. That, there. Yeah, that's awesome. And, well. Brady and uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated as well. PWI well, right there. Uh, please subscribe. You get fifty percent off the cover price, uh, which basically, uh, if you only buy three magazines a year, I I figure it like it's the five hundred, the women's one hundred, and the year end awards. They're the three that most people would buy if they buy them. So now you can get the entire year worth of the entire year's worth of magazines for the cost of just those three. Okay. Yeah, so you carry the guys. Well, every all that information will be linked up in the in the video also. So you know, yeah. well, we got you hooked up on that. But so Brady, I think that we cover everything, don't you think, Jean-Paul? Yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely, we you know, we really appreciate Brady being here with us. You know, giving taking some time out of his day. We don't want to really take too much more. So again, you know, thank you for all the information. You know, we we covered. A lot of it, because this man has so much more to cover. But like we said, we don't want to take too much more of his time. So I was and, gonna say, you know, we could talk about the time that I smoked, smash, uh, that I uh, choked that idiot smash from demolition. But like, gotta leave him wanting more, you know. Exactly. exactly. Well, if, you if know, that's the case, that, it I'll means another it. opportunity with us. Yeah. Then that you're already yeah, are, are, <laughs> you're already <laughs> telling us that you're gonna be for another episode. It's yeah. gonna be part two. Yeah. So yeah, I had so much fun, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Oh no! Hey, thank you again. Thank you. you know, oh. Thank you for everything that, like, for your time. Thank you for the privilege of like being able to talk to you for your knowledge and everything. We're so glad and humbled to have you. And Jean Paul, where they can find us? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know, follow us there for all updates on the videos. You know, YouTube is the main place. You know, you can see our weekly show reviews and then also see amazing interviews like the one we're doing right here today with Brady Hicks. You know, superstar of pro wrestling. So. 
you and, know, and also, also like the ghost hunter. Like, you know, yep. he, oh, he said it here on Robert. He said it here on Robert. Ghost hunter. So we always yeah, have like breaking news. <laughs> Not creepy at all, you know, because we have a thing working about ghosts <laughs> also. But that's only in the works. So, Jean Paul, I think you and me and Brady, we have one more thing left to say, right? Yep. And that is. Uh, 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 uh,